Anyway, moving on, talking about kids and stuff. Um, there's been a topic and of discussion online with some people regarding whether or not college is worth it, and I guess college meaning university. And my initial reaction to this debate is that I'm one of those people who I practice the philosophy of always doing the opposite of what everyone else is doing. So if everybody now is kind of, you know, going and cheering on and using this mantra of like college is a waste of time, I didn't learn anything in college, I learned everything through YouTube, blah, 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 blah. I would actually do the opposite if that was me. And if I was a kid and I was coming up someone or if someone asked me for advice, I'd actually say, instead of dropping out, instead of not going to college, actually go to college, either for the education, either for the job prospects, or to obviously for the self building whatever it may be like maturities type of thing going on so where you got to you know meet different people you get to grow up a little bit you get to live on your own you have to figure out how to balance your bills um how to get a job how to make money whatever it is all those things are quite important so if it's me and i was that person i would say go to college just for that thing and just to do the opposite of what everyone else is doing because everyone else is kind of trying to do the whole social media making it on my own do my own business um online content sort of thing and it's a little bit overcrowded. And if anything, I feel like you'd be you'd be a far better person to follow online, even if you did want to do it. If you did want to start vlogging, you wanted to start being a content creator, a live streamer, I feel like you'll be a well more rounded, a far more interesting person to follow if you actually had other things going on outside of just making content. Because I feel like a lot of these people online are a little bit dense. They're a little bit one dimensional because they don't really have much going on apart from their streaming room, apart from what they see on the internet. They don't really live a really interesting life. So I feel like living an interesting life, doing interesting things, um, seeing different people, hearing different stories will definitely inform the, the things that you do and will most likely make you a well-rounded human in the end personally for me but anyway the debate um centers around this um article that i read courtesy of freddie DeBoer's substack the title is the college um the, the is college worth it conversation doesn't mean much without a sense of what teenagers will do instead so we're going to scroll down and read the article here quickly it says here there's a debate going on currently regarding the significant decline in faith in whether college is worth the course um the cost sorry particularly among young people Here's Paul Tuff with a case for the prosecution and here's David Deming with a case for the defence. Swelling around in the usual question of whether these various quantitative benefits are caused by getting a degree or whether they simply reflect the selection effects of those who self um, saw into college, people who can and do go to college are people who tend to enjoy all numbers of advantages over those who don't. This is an important debate, given that, for example, people with degrees enjoy not just a wage and employment premium, but a significant higher lifespan than those without. There's a lot of literature out there which you can per which you can per uh, peruse if you like. So that's a really good point to make, that most people that get degrees usually have higher wage um, abilities and obviously they are able to get far better jobs. It's just an average type of thing that happens, which makes complete sense because there is only a small number of people. There is a there is a way smaller number of people that go to college all the way through and graduate than there's people who drop out and just decide to go to work. So it just increases your ability to make more money and get a better job. Anyway, um, it continues here. Those of you who've read my brilliantly eye-opening Majestic First book, I know that I do indeed think we are pushing too many people into college pipeline, but my resistance is little um, different than most. It's not that the reflection of the cost of college, at least not for the students. I think, A, we push so many people into college because the Reagan, Thatcher, neoliberal consensus destroyed middle-class jobs in an industry and manufacturing, and we don't have many alternatives. And B, we shouldn't push kids into college because most of those who have to be pushed will prove to lack the cognitive and soft skills necessary for them to capitalize on their degrees anyway. When people obsess over the college pipeline, they do so because they think that college can turn everybody into a busy little um, meritocrat and the kind who go on to jobs like Google or Slack or the Ford Foundation or the Department of Interior. But the high college excellence to college to inviolable PMC employment cycle depends on a level of natural intellectual talent plus the ability to delay gratification and keep to a schedule that many people don't have. So we need other models. And in the book, I explore some. And it's something that I think is very, very important because I feel like nowadays, the whole content generation run, the whole trying to make it to be an influencer doing in your own. I've always thought, in my personal opinion, 
it's never required you to quit completely one avenue of kind of employment. You can do them in tandem. You can work a full-time job like I do and also do the content on the side. And then whenever the content kicks off, you can then maybe decrease your hours of work or quit completely. But the idea that you to throw everything into just doing that one thing, all the eggs in one basket is crazy, especially when you consider the level of competition that exists out there. It just doesn't make any viable sense. And for me personally, outside of that sort of like, oh, be careful precaution side of things, I just feel like as a content creator or somebody that wants to make something of themselves outside of the regular you know, um, industrial complex of jobs, whatever it may be, you have to make yourself a far better option than the others are out there. And I think the options that you add to yourself are the ones where you have a varied and interesting working experience. You have a varied and unique life experience in terms of your family, relationships. You have a unique view on the world. But I think all of these things are greatly influenced by the things that you do away from your phone like real life, like where you go to school, where you live, who you talk to, the places that you travel, all these things inform those sort of decisions. So if anything, if you actually want to go, you know, balls deep and put all your eggs in one basket on the content vibes, you're obviously, you're probably, I feel like better off just doing a college degree just for the sake of it even if it's a social studies things just so you can have the experience of going to a college meeting other people traveling um budgeting having to find a job getting sacked getting heartbroken um, having friends abandon you trying to find new friends all these sort of interesting things will go a long way into informing your content and giving you a different perspective and view on things so that you'll be a far more compelling people person sorry that people can follow that's just my way of looking at it um Again, what do I know? It continues. Here's the thing, though. In the debate, as it exists in the real world, I think a really t um, truncheon question for the kids who forego college is this. What will you do instead? How will you spend those four plus years of your life if not in school? Which is a very important question if you're a kid growing up now, what you want to do, because it's all well and good being a content creation guy. But being a content creation guy at home, not working, living with your parents, giving them stress, you know, eating all their food, using up all their electricity, and just being a fucking nuis nuisance, especially in your mid-20s or fucking late 20s or early 30s, that's a little bit much. You have to kind of be aware and cognitive of the, the pressure and the expectation your parents or society have on you in that regard. So you have to kind of give yourself every advantage that you can. So in those four years that you're not working or that you're not doing conventional education, maybe getting a part-time job, maybe doing a vocational thing, maybe even helping out in a soup kitchen, all these tiny things could actually go a long way into giving you some form of like social credit and also getting your fucking guardians or parents off your back it's actually really important because if if not it's going to be really hard for you to be creative for you to be expressive and be free knowing that you have that weight on the back of your head that people are thinking that you're lazy you're not doing anything you're helping out in the house you're being you're wasting your life um disappointing people all these type of things are not the way to go so you have to actually be quite you, if you actually are going to do the whole, I'm going to put all my eggs in the basket of like not going to college, you actually have to plan it out a lot further out than whether you would then if you had gone to college. You know what I mean? You have to spec that all out year by year. Whereas when you go to college, it's sort of like autopilot. They kind of take you on the route. Every year is it throws up different challenges. But as long as you pass and you turn up or you turn up and you pass, most likely you're going to just keep churning on, churning on. But if you have to actually stay out of college, you're going to have to figure out what you're going to be doing day by day for those next four years. And that's a lot of time. That's a lot of idle time. And most likely you're not going to use it to your advantage. You know, you're not going to you're not going to use it to the extent that you need to use it. Most likely that's going to happen. But anyway, it continues here. Unfortunately, this question usually either um, not really um, confronted or answered in a, in a bullshit way when this topic is debated. There is an assumption that people will save and make money, but not a lot of discussion on how and what they'll give up in doing so. There's also a lot of vague hand washing or sorry, hand waving about how they'll pursue other kinds of enrichment um, without the sense of associated costs. You hear from things from young people rejecting college like, I'll do my art. I'll do, I'll travel the world, which should immediately prompt the question with whose money? You can't just bum around for five or four or five years doing art unless you have some sort of bullshit job you hate that makes too, too much time, which more people, um, which for most people defeats the purpose. Unless you have a rich parent who will subsidize you, in which case then cool. Yeah, don't go to college if you don't want to. Um, you'll be fine regardless. But that's not most people. Traveling in less than accessible, sorry, traveling is even less accessible if you don't have rich parents. I guess you could do it by loading up a credit card debt but going into a lot of debt was the very thing we were all trying to avoid right 
at some point you have to square the economic decision not to attend college with the unromantic reality of life living at home or in a lower wage employment exactly and that's the actual reality of it because again unless you have parents that can subsidize you then fair enough do what you need to do but if you're a regular schmegular person whose parents can't subsidize your living you know your lifestyle and you don't want to put them in a position to do so in the first place whatever it may be and you want to be independent and do your own thing you really need to kind of think it through of not going to college because the aspect the other side of things is that most likely if you drop out your employment options aren't going to be that great so you're going to have to get a low paying job in the first place to pay bills or to kind of sub support your lifestyle the only other option will be i think if you want to do the art creative way will be to move somewhere where the cost of living is relatively cheap and that's what basically people were doing when the whole berlin thing was happening right and that's probably when i kind of missed the wave to go there but even though when i did eventually start visiting berlin quite often i quickly realized that although i love the city and then I love everything about it. I don't exactly want to live there. It would be some place where I'd love to have like a home there. Eventually, I will eventually probably have an apartment there where I can go and kind of like, you know, rent it out or whatever. And then probably um, stay there whenever I'm visiting. But in terms of living there year round, it's just not for me. But one of the benefits of living in a place like Berlin and a place like that, where it's kind of like, you know, the cost of living is fairly low, is that because the cost of living is fairly low, it puts less pressure on you having to make money to survive, which then means there's pre there's less pressure on you in terms of the art that you make. So you can be a little bit more free to experiment, to try new things. And most likely, when you're having fun, when you're not putting any undue expectation on the work that you're doing, then it will most likely flourish. So in a weird way, your art would actually benefit and blossom from you going to a place where you maybe live like quote unquote like a rat so that then your artwork can flourish with you know no expectation or whatever it may be and then you can kind of go on from there it's a really strange way to go about things but unfortunately if you live in the uk that option isn't really open for you especially since brexit but if obviously if you're a mainland europe you still have the option to do so but if you're here you most likely have maybe the option of maybe going to like another town in the uk if you're living in london and going somewhere where maybe it's fairly cheaper to live maybe a manager or Leeds, uh, Birmingham, wherever it may be, Liverpool, all those places maybe are better options to go to so that at least you have the option to pursue your art, but then you could also live working part-time in Tesco. So you don't have to, you know, be here in London working an actual full-time job that's legitimately killing your soul and giving you no encouragement to get, you know, in front of a bit of paper and draw for the evening once you finish work. Because that's a big thing that happens too. Because once you're young, you don't realize it because you have, you know, you have like an untapped amount of fucking energy. But sometimes work life can actually drain that out of you to the point where the last thing you want to do when you get home is work on your own personal project which can be really depressing to be fair so i think the conclusion for me is if you're a kid and you want and you're debating dropping out don't just because everybody else is doing it i feel like you should try to at least pursue that first year of studies to see how it's going and also do the content or whatever you're doing on the side um, at the same time why not you have the time to do so um you might have to give up some friends you might have to give up going to festivals or going out as much but i feel like those two things in tandem could actually help you and make you a far better um, candidate for future things going forward in my personal opinion but again it all depends on how you view it it really does all depend on how you view it